Barakatay Yahweh, Barakatay Yahweh Shai. Call on him, La Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baracha Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Baha Sham means in their name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Baracha Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all sincerity. It's Brother Mathathia from the Great Millstone Camp to Branch on Des Moines. And um, just uh, want to do a brief little lesson, Lord willing, I hope it's out of fine. Um, touching on uh, the Day of Atonement, which is uh, coming in once the uh, sun sets. You know, and um, just touching on the importance of this day. You know, and uh, without further ado, we'll just get right into it. Now, I'm going to start in Hebrews 9, and I'm going to start at the top. It says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary, right? Which... When we go um, into the laws of Moses, right? That's those uh, uh, that's those ordinances of divine service that Aaron, his sons, and the other priests had to perform, right? And it says in a worldly sanctuary, meaning we had a sanctuary here on this earth. Verse two: For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and aaron's rod that budded in the tables of covenant so paul is going into explaining what was in inside um the holiest within the veil right verse five and over it the cherubims of glory shattering the mercy seat of which of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of the Heavenly Father. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. You see, so this going into the ordinance, once again, that was given unto Aaron, through Moses, right? Now, this is the book of Leviticus 16 and 2. It says, And Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So when you go into this, it goes into the ordinance and the service that Aaron had to perform. But the key thing right here, it says what? He wasn't supposed to go into the holiest of holies all the time it was only once a year that he would go into there you see so from there let's go to exodus 30 and let's start at 10 and it says and aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offerings of atonements once in the year shall he make an atonement upon it throughout your generations it is most holy unto yahweh basham yahweh shah that's a key thing right there man See, this day that's coming in, or, or, or the day that we're entering into, right? The Day of Atonement, which starts at sunset, is most holy unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. You see, because these things have a shadow, right? I believe, uh, let me see. I don't know if that uh, Hebrews 9 is going to speak how the, the services that um, Aaron and his sons will perform. Or a shadow. Let's see. Yep, here it is. This is Hebrews 8. I'll start at 1. It says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest, right, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. So there's a tabernacle in the heavens, which our Lord Yahweh Shai is the high priest of. You see, that's why Moses was warned. Let's see. 
man, it's in the same chapter. Okay, so I just keep reading, right? It says, verse 3, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Meaning what? Meaning that the Levites would offer that. But see, our Lord Yahweh Shah is the priest of the heavens. You see? Which is what this Hebrews is going into, explaining the, the order of Melchizedek and how Yahweh Shah is uh, uh, Malak Tazadak, the king of righteousness, which that's how you say Melchizedek in the Hebrew, the king of Salem, the king of peace. And that Abraham paid tithes to our Lord Yahweh Shah all the way back in the book of Genesis before the, uh, 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 the law, before Levi was even born, right? So it says, verse 5, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, you see? So the services that Aaron and his sons were to perform was a shadow and an example of what was performed in the heavens, right? It says, as Moses was admonished of the heavenly father when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So it wasn't just a, a, a tent or a tabernacle that was just made off a, a, a one man's thought. No, it was built after the pattern that was given from the heavens, man. You see, the heavenly father showed, right, let's Exodus 25. And 40 straight to the point and look that thou make them after their pattern which was showed thee in the mount right acts 7 and 44 our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed speaking unto moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen so the lord showed moses in the mount the pattern in the fashion of the tabernacle that should be built the same thing that was revealed unto king david through the spirit about how the sanctuary on earth was to be built that Solomon would uh, 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 initially start to build, man. You see? So it says, verse 6, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, right? And that better promises is, is ultimately the law has been written within us, the Lord giving us that fleshly heart, as it is written in the book of Ezekiel. But let's go back to Hebrews 9 and verse 7. But it says, But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. So it's the same thing that our Lord Yahweh Shah performed. This is the book of Hebrews 7 and 27. It says, Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself, speaking of our Lord Yahweh Shah, right? So it wasn't continual sacrifices that need to be made daily or once every year. No, Yahweh Shah did that once over 2,000 years ago. You see? So let's go back to verse 7. It says, But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Spirit, this signifying, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. You see, once again, it's going to explain it. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that cannot make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Meaning in the spirit, in the mind. You see, that's why the blood of bulls and goats could never cleanse sin. It was the blood of our Lord Yahweh Shah that perfected us, man. Right? Which is he is the ultimate atonement. Let's get this in the book of 1 John. Uh, is it 1 John 2? Let me just type it up. This is a good one. This is Romans five and ten it says for if when we were enemies we were re meaning we were in our sin we were alienated against the most high we were reconciled to the most high by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only so but we also joy in the most high through our lord yahweh shahamashiach by whom we have now received the atonement man you see that so we, we received the atonement through our Lord Yahweh Shah, that's the ultimate atonement. Now let's uh, jump to the book of 1 John, if I'm not mistaken. 
I thought it was in First John. Uh, I might I might be thinking of a pro, uh, propitiation, right? I just read this this First John two and one because the propitiation is the appeasement. It's the same as atonement. It says, "My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not." And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shahamashiach, the righteous. And he is the propitiation, right? And appeasing. The means of appeasing, right? Ooh, ooh. Right here, Strong's definition. Atonement. You see that? It says, and he is the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world, meaning for all of Israel. But only the elect will obtain it here on this side. And the rest that uh, and the rest of the rebels will obtain it in the kingdom of heaven through the loins of the elect, through the mercy that the elect is obtaining. Right now, let's go back. Verse eight again. It says the Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time. Then present in which. We offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances opposed on them until the time of reformation. You see that? So it was those carnal ordinances of the washing and the, the sacrificing that we had to perform until the time of reformation, meaning the time that our Lord Yahweh Shah came, which is why when he gave up the spirit, This is the book of uh, Matthew 27 and 50. Yahweh Shah, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the spirit, right? And when he cried out, he said, it is finished, right? Verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent, right? And the reason it was rent in twain is because, going back, it's because that new way into the holies was being manifested. And it was through our Lord Yahweh Shah. Now, uh, let's get this. This is, um... <laughs> yep, this is Hebrews 10. And... Verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. That's the better, better promises, right? And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahweh Shai, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of the most high let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience you see that see those cardinal ordinances could never do this but the blood of our lord yahweh shah is what done this for us man you see it says having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, meaning his word, were renewed through the scriptures. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You see? So let's go back to Hebrews 9, verse 11. It says, but Yahweh Shah being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Right. And ultimately, we are that uh, 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 that tabernacle that's being built here on earth, man. You see, that's not being built with the, that's not being built with man's hands. Right. Well, let's keep reading verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats. And of calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, man. So technically, we don't have to keep the day of atonement, but we keep it because why? According to the book of Judges, it says what? Um, eight and eleven. I'm sorry. What am I thinking? Uh, 
Let me see. Five and eleven. This is Judges 5 and 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers, right? <laughs> the noise of archers, that's those missiles, man. So we're speaking about being delivered from America. In the place of drawing water, drawing water represents slavery. Let's get there real quick. This is Joshua 9 and 21. And the princes said unto them, let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princes had promised them. Right. So these these heathen who lied and said that they were from a far country, they were Canaanites, which we were commanded to destroy. But they lied and said that they were from a far country. So we made a covenant with them. So then when we found out that they were actually the people of the land, we made them slaves instead. man. You see. So going back to Judges 5 and 11, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water in the place that we were slaves, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his village in Israel. Then shall the people of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai go down to the gates, man. You see, so we would be rehearsing the righteous acts. And what's a righteous act? It's keeping the Day of Atonement. This is the book of Leviticus. Chapter 23 and 27. Also on the 10th day of this month, Salak, I'm sorry. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. The Hebrew word kapar, right? Which is expiation, the same thing that is said in 1 John about our Lord Yahweh Shah, right? It says, it shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls in offering an offering made by fire unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. So we fast on this day. You see? It says we afflict our souls, man. The word afflict is Ainah. We afflict or humble ourselves, and we do that through what? Through fasting. This is the book of Daniel. Chapter 10. And verse 12, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself, I not <laughs> afflict, humble, right? Thyself before thy power, thy words were heard and I am come for thy words. So Daniel fasted. You see. And this in. What makes it even more heavy, man, this is our Lord Yahweh Shah coming to Daniel when you read verse 6, you know, lines up with Revelation, the first chapter, right? Because it says, verse 2, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled, right? So what? He fasted, you see? So going down to verse 12. Yahweh Shai came to him and said from the first day he fasted, his, his words were heard, man. So this day is a most holy day that we're coming into, man. You see? So let's go back. Hebrews 12 and let's read, I'm sorry, Hebrews 9 verse 12 again. It says, neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh. When you go into those cardinal ordinances in the law, we had to do certain things in order to purify our flesh. For instance, it says the, uh, the, the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean. That goes into um, the law when you touch a dead body, you have to go through that purifying, uh, the purification process in order to be cleansed, right? So if those ordinances cleanse in the flesh, verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Yahweh Shai, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? Which is why the 10th chapter says, let us draw near unto the most high with a full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled with a pure conscience i'm rough i just butchered it but we we just read it in hebrews 10 and 22 you see verse 15 and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by the means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance so 
a side note, when it speaks about the Gentiles that are being called to eternal life through Yahweh Shah, it's because what? He redeemed them from the transgressors, <laughs> from the transgressions that were under the first testament, showing you that they are Israelites, man. There's no way around it. Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is no more strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept, every law to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of cows and of goats with water and scarlet, wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which the Most High have enjoined unto you. Right? Because the scripture says that uh, blood is what makes the atonement. This is... um. Leviticus 17 and 11 for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul and Yahweh Shah's blood was that ultimate atonement you see verse 20. It says saying this is the blood of the testament which the most I have enjoined unto you. Verse 21, moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. That's why when Yahweh Shah in Matthew, the 26th chapter, this is Matthew 26 and 26, it says, and as they were eating, Yahweh Shah took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins, man. So when we have the Passover, when we eat the uh, the unleavened bread, and when we drink the wine, it's in remembrance of our Lord Yahweh Shah, according to the book of 1 Corinthians. When we do these lessons, when we get together, when we break bread, right? Meaning what? When we... uh. Uh, 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 go into these scriptures to understand it and to edify one another. That's a remembrance of our Lord Yahweh Shai. You see, so technically, this whole truth is an atonement, right? But this day that's coming makes it even a, like the Lord said, man, it is most holy unto Him in that book of uh, uh, Exodus that we read, right? But let's go back to first. 21 again moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these you see that so the pattern of things that was done on the earth will be purified with blood but the heavenly things was purified with what? With better sacrifices than these. For Yahweh Shah has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. How much more on the actual day of atonement, man? You see? Which is uh, 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 why the new moons and the Sabbath days are heavy unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Because uh, on the new moons and Sabbath days, right? Let's get this. This is the book of uh, Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel 46 and 1. It says, Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, the Lord, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. Once again, that's a carnal uh, uh, ordinance that was done on the earth but it once again is done after the pattern of things in the heavens man so on the new moons and on the uh, and on the sabbath days the gates of the heavens are open man <laughs> you see and this date uh, uh, that we're coming into the day of atonement is treated as a sabbath so it's a very very important day that's being a uh, 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 um that we are allowed to partake in, man. Um, 
Verse 24 again. For Yahweh Shah is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, meaning of what, what was in heaven, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. Right? So when we fast on this day, we partake in this day, and we send up those prayers on this day, those incense, that sacrifice now. Right? Because it says in the law in Leviticus 23, we have to offer a sacrifice. But what's the sacrifices today? It's the praise of our lips. Right? And not only that, but what? This is the book of Psalms 141. And two, let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, man. Right? And on top of fast and on top of afflicting ourselves, like it says in Daniel, from the first time, man, our words were heard. You see? So it's a very heavy and a high spiritual day, man. Let's go back. Hebrews 9, verse 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Yeah, man. Every year he would, the Lord would have to come back and offer himself. Nah, man. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So showing you that when our Lord Yahweh Shah was on the scene, that was the end of the what? Of this age, man. And now we're in the end of the end. You see? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Yahweh Shah was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation, man. So, Lord willing, you know, uh, this was edifying. I just wanted to, you know, touch in on that, man. And Yahweh Shai is our atonement. And it's a very heavy day that we're entering into, man. So, um, hopefully, uh, 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 brothers, you know, prepare themselves for this day, man. And may Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai accept our atonement. So, Lord willing, I hope this was edifying. The water Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah, for giving me spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah, Baracha HaKodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity, all and charity. A hey, Shalom.